Let's get it, let's get it. St. Louis, that's my city, my hometown. I mean, it is and always has been considered one of the most dangerous places to live in the world. But for me, this is my home. And I couldn't see myself living nowhere else in the world. They call me Thizzle. That's me right there. AKA the ex hustler. And it's a little bit of my story. I grew up on the west side of St. Louis, uh, 7th District, uh, 26th Ward. Grew up um, down by the Alpha Gordon complex. Hold them on at Etsu, hold them on at Bartman, Maple. I grew up on Maple mostly all of my life. My uncle owned a, um, a six family flat apartment building on Maple called the Montana. And that's where I spent most of my childhood at. I think we, we moved from on the Montana when I was like 13, something like that, 13, 14 years old. My daddy was pretty much gone my whole life. My daddy was, was never really around in my life. I saw my daddy three times my whole life before I was uh, 21 years old. Third time I seen my daddy, I was uh, 14 years old. I went to stay with him. They sent me up there to go to school. I got into so much trouble uh, while I was up there. I ended up stealing my daddy's gun. I'm hanging out with all kind of dudes up there, just like I was doing in St. Louis. And my daddy told me to go back to St. Louis and never come back. I wasn't welcome in his house no more. So my relationship with my, with my daddy was always shot. Uh, growing up, I ain't know what it was like to have a daddy. Like The only daddy figures that I had were my mama boyfriends and most of them wasn't on nothing and or the ones that really really looked out for me they was hustlers and they showed me how to get it in the street so that's what i did i grew up all my life hustling me and my cousins it was four or five of us that hung together um in the hood four dudes and two girls so six of us all together but it was four dudes uh and two girls actually five dudes and two girls my cousin Wern, my cousin drew my cousin tank my cousin duda and me and uh, right now, only people alive is me and Dude. Yeah, I know Thizzle because uh, that's my big cousin. You know what I'm saying? Grew up together, did everything together. You know what I'm saying? Taught me a lot of good things, a lot of bad things too, but you know, we ain't gonna talk about that. <laughs> that's my little cousin Doodle right there. Like I said, out of five of us that hung together, me and him the last two that's even still alive. And like he said, I done taught him a lot of crazy stuff in this world. And I'm definitely not proud of that. As far as when it comes to the streets, like, dude, I can remember days, like, dude was, he's always been big. He has long, like, good hair, like Indian hair. You know what I'm saying? I used to call him YG, you know what I'm saying? We used to go around, you know what I'm saying? Everybody respect him, knew what it was. I can remember days where he came outside and whatever he said, it, it went. You know what I'm saying? Nobody questioned that. You know what I'm saying? If something happened, it happened. I ain't gonna go into details and say anything that happened, but a lot of things did happen. You know what I'm saying? So at the same time, it's like, dude wasn't no fake out here. Like, everything he telling y'all in these songs that he doing, like, it's true. You know what I'm saying? I remember being on Barber in the house with him, me, him, and his baby mama. You know what I'm saying? Dogs running around, little beat machines, guns, people's in and out. You know what I'm saying? His house actually was the spot. That's where the whole block hung at. You know what I'm saying? If he didn't want you on the front, he came out and moved you. You know what I'm saying? And as far as just being out and around on the west side, like, everybody know who Thizzle is. Everybody know what Thizzle was about on the west side, even to now. You know what I'm saying? So he really did y'all a good favor by leaving. When I first met Y, you know what I'm saying, he was on, you know, nothing but some straight, the same type of stuff I'm on, straight street, slums, straight hood. That's my dirty Jule right there. One of the realest cats I met when I was out in the streets. The funny thing is we grew up blocks away from each other and never met. Until somebody we both knew thought it would benefit us to meet each other. You know what I'm saying? My guy, uh, S. Sean, brought me to that neighborhood. You know, we was both from the 7th District, both from the West Side. They was from 1 1 area. I'm from over there, back off the shoe. You know what I'm saying? They brought me over there. And it was all love. We just had a nothing but a, what, a keyboard in the, in the crib. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Nothing but a keyboard in the crib. I think it was, you know what I'm saying? It was a hood spot. And we did what we did. We traded verses all night long. In life, some things are intended to be a certain way. Like, a, a son is intended to be uh, groomed and shaped in life by his father. And with me not growing up with a father, I was groomed and shaped by everything and everybody that was around me. So the neighborhood I grew up in, when, when drugs became a, a big part of the community, I wasn't about to smoke drugs and I wasn't about to be broke and hungry neither, so I tried. 
But when gangs became a part of the neighborhood, I'm already from over here. I'm affiliated whether I want to be or not. I come out my house, I walk down my block, like dudes come through my neighborhood, I'm from this neighborhood, whether I want to be or not. And But the thing was, I wanted to be. Like these was my homeboys, like I love them. So when gangs came in, me and the homeboys, we start banging. It wasn't until 1999, after so much crazy stuff had happened with me, um, life was kind of at rock bottom. My cousin Tank had just got killed. Uh, crazy thing was, Tank got killed by one of my partners, one of my homeboys that I grew up with all my life. Like, he killed my cousin Tank. Uh, he shot him dead in front of, like, a bunch of my other cousins, a uh, bunch of my family members, people hanging out on the block, right down here where we at now. And, um, when he killed Tank, it kind of rocked my whole life. It, it rocked my whole foundation. Only thing I knew was hood life. Everything I had learned in life, I was taught by dudes in the hood outside of school stuff. Everything else I learned from dudes in the hood. I learned about sex from people uh, in the hood. I learned about uh, making money from people in the hood. I learned about my family orientation. Everything was learned from dudes that I grew up around in the hood. So when a dude from my hood that I would have put my life on the line for, that I, I didn't roll with, that, that I would have died for, when he turned around and killed somebody that I love so much, Tank was my best friend in the world. When he killed him, it rocked my whole foundation. It rocked my whole life because that stuff wasn't normal. Dudes don't kill their partners, you know what I'm saying? So it rocked me. And the first thing it did was made me turn to God. Like I went to God and when I went to God, I started asking God questions, and God started answering my questions. I used to go to a church called West End Mount Carmel, and um, we went down on the neighborhood just to say what's up, introduce ourselves to him and everything, and there was some young dudes on the corner just chilling, and um, at the time, my homeboy Flame was with us, and I'm um, in a group called Do Season, and um, so they, you know, we started spitting and rhyming or whatever, so Flame spit some bars. And they liked it, you know what I mean? It was like, wow, they was like, dude spit like that from the church. So, you know, like that relationship led to uh, Thizzle coming to the church, you know, my pastor asked him to spit. So he came, he spit at the church, and that was like our first real, like, oh, like this dude is dope. One of the crazy things that happened after that, um, right after that, a week or so later, I was arrested for murder. It was actually something I didn't do, um, but my record at that point was so bad that everything pointed towards me doing it. I'm a material witness on an aggravated battery uh, with a handgun, and uh, they believe uh, this might be in retaliation uh, to her testimony. And I remember the the, the epiphany that I believe from when I, you know, just knowing him and seeing it go down is when you know he almost had a murder uh, mur a murder case against him, and so he was down at Clayton, and they was you know about to straight like throw away the key on him, but he prayed. I remember him saying he prayed to God. And he was like, God, if you, like, if you, like, if you real, if you trying to get at me, man, please, like, save me from this. That was the epiphany, I believe, when he was like, like, God straight with me. And so you see, you saw him from go from these, you know, from these places of having, you know, what I'm saying, multiple girlfriends to having different feelings about, you know, um, his kids not being in the same household. Whether otherwise he would be like, man, I'm just doing my thing. He was concerned about these. These things that, you know, that we all should be concerned about as fathers, you know what I'm saying, and not just as Christians, but just as regular dudes. And so, you know, it just went from, you know, the, you know, smoking squares and, and that, that fell off, you know what I mean, to like being high, that fell off, self-control, you know what I'm saying, started to think about getting his GED, like all of this stuff started to grow, you know, as he became closer to the Lord. It was strange to see, for me, to see such a drastic change, you know, it was like, it was my first time ever seeing like God takes somebody that that came from, you know what I mean, not really having a father figure in his life, from slanging, shooting at cats, getting shot at, you know, so much murder and death in his family and loss. Um, I mean, just, I mean, anything that you think that happened in the hood, he experienced it. To see him come from that to trust in God was miraculous. I can honestly say that he was the first person I saw that was a product of the ghetto straight be delivered by the power of the Lord like and, and like no BS of you know what I'm saying like saying this I mean, an angel came down or none of that stuff like it was just him believing who Jesus was and his life just changed drastically and so I'm a living witness man like I've never seen it yet done you know what I mean I know God is doing it everywhere but like I seen God do a miracle in his life with somebody that wasn't from the same lifestyle I was and I was rocked by it
you know what I'm saying? I done seen him go from where his music now, he more like more spiritual, but it's still that Uncle Why it's still raw. It's the raw spiritual music I ever heard, uplifting. It's some real, some real stuff. You know what I'm saying? I was a young I, I, I just doing my, I was doing my right thing. I was doing my wrong thing. My dude was a, a role model maybe for the wrong thing then, but even now I see him be like, you can do progress with every, what, whatever you want to do in life and whatever angle you want to take, you can do it. And and bro, and Unc showed me that. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's one thing that I, I envision. Like we come from there, we come from there, the bottom of boy, but we come from the West, and and doing whatever this was, and you can switch up. And do what and do what's more positive was go uplift some people, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. and it's still and still be hood and, with and it. Still and you still being real. And it's still like, real. I you still ain't changed up because one of the realest I know. The beauty of the whole story is, is by the grace of God I got out. God got me out the situation. And right now I'm standing here today. So my whole life was rocked by that situation, but all of my life I grew up thinking one thing, get money get girls and live but I learned that that wasn't living and a lot of that I learned the hard way Fizzle now like Fizzle is like one of the greatest men God ever created man from a dude that was out here doing everything under the sun to a dude that speak about God and goes in neighborhoods and talk to people and can move a whole world because I'd have seen him I'd have been with him before and seen how he move a whole crowd by himself with just his words like if you you can't go from being a goon to being like holy unless it's meant to be the same power that he had in the streets now he have it in the church now he have it with people that want to believe in God and that's how he gonna draw a lot of people closer to God because he is speaking the truth